Shabbat Shalom. I and hear from uh, Manitoba, everyone. Manitoba. Be well. Hi, Joan May. Martos, everyone. We're not muted. And I hope you heal quickly, honey. Thank you. Bye, well, Joan May. Sorry to hear that. Well, oh my God, sorry to hear that. You have to. Hi, Joan May. like half of a page because it's not the whole thing but on 662 we have Hashivenu is it going to be in that Hashivenu all right okay yeah let's do it we start with this English though and it'll be familiar to you return again return again Return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again. Return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are born. Turn to the land of your soul. Hashivenu. 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 Adonai. Hele. that I have sopranos in the choir that are usually here to do that for me. Where are you? <laughs> Let's return again. 
Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. This in-between Shabbat is so special. It also not only feels different because we're in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but literally at Temple Sholem it feels so different because of exactly where we are, where we're sitting, that there are still cameras sitting right in front of us, and also that we bring that feeling. We bring that feeling of being between those two holy days, of starting a new year and being in that time of yamim noraim, those awesome days. One of my favorite little stories that helps me think about these days uh, kind of metaphorically puts this in terms of being at the beach. You've set out into the water, just kind of waiting around, just enjoying bopping up and down with the waves. The sun is so beautiful and so warm. And then all of a sudden, you hear a whistle. And it's the lifeguard. And you look up and they're pointing at you. And you're like, what did I do? And so you look around and you're like, oh, oh, I'm not where I meant to be. I got in the water and I stood and waited about 10 feet out, but then I slowly moved too far from the shore. And the lifeguard was there to say, hey, look around, notice where you are, and return to the place that you meant to be. That same way of our high holy days. We're in this period of returning to where we meant to be. Having that sound of the shofar instead of the whistle of the lifeguard. But especially these times of community, of coming together. Especially for really exciting, happy moments like Ofrofs. They help us all to just take that moment to look around and say, all right, I want to do this a little bit better. I want to work a little bit better at this place for my next year. And on this Shabbat, we uh, bring a lot of sweetness. Some of you might have some sweetness in your hands already, but we're going to hold on to that sweetness for a bit as we're going to um, invite up Maddie Major to help light the candles uh, for Shabbat as Maddie has uh, been working, uh, I would say your Marla's temple partner, or your partner in justice, we'll put it that way. Um, and so in honor of those seven or eight years now of uh, working on Shul and Justice together, we are on page 120. And for our friends who are joining by Zoom, um, in the link, your numbers are a little different. You're on page two. My goodness, I literally just said you have a young child at home. You shouldn't know how to play with matches. Okay, here we go. Ta'anu, Elohim, Ramah, 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 
As we bring in the sweetness of Shabbat with the blessing over the wine, on page 122, we rise as one community for Kiddush. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, borei peri hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam, hasher kishanu b'mitzvotam. We may be seated. Unless you're uh, Marla and John, in which case I'm going to invite you here. I'll invite you to the... Marla, gross. John, Carmel, would you please come to the Bima? So, and I'll have you come here uh, because I don't want anybody to hurt their arms when they throw candy at you later. So I just want to, um, firstly, I don't know if everybody knows this term, meet cute. Do people know this term from the films? So in a movie, the way that you meet cute is when, like, say somebody, you know, like is walking and they accidentally bump into someone, their, their books fall, and then the other person picks them up, and oh my gosh, they've just met cute. And here at Temple Sholem, we have an extraordinary meet cute story. And that is that the two of you were volunteering here at the Monday meal, and here you met your soulmate. Now, I love this because that's not only meat cute, it's meat Jewish. <laughs> Do you know, like there's nothing better than two people who feel like it's their responsibility to repair the world, who knew that you could also help to repair your own hearts and to be able to find in each other someone who would be able to respect you so deeply and love you so easily and dearly that you would find here that kind of love that people just hope for. And so it is such an honor to be able to bless the two of you on this Shabbat. This is, as you know, Shabbat Shuva. It's a time where we do this huge turning to see what's the best within us and how do we bring it out in the world. It's rare that on a Shabbat Shuvah, what you get to do is just turn toward each other. So I'm going to invite you to turn toward each other, but let's make it a little cinematic. <laughs> and I'm going to invite the rest of the clergy to come this way. And you come just a little closer. We're going to make this really cinematic. Look at this. We're even going to go up on different levels. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I mean, wow. you can come over a little closer. We will and so as we have this opportunity to bless the two of you, we invite the whole congregation to rise in spirit, in body, to rise however it is that your soul elevates, and then put your prayer books down. Nobody needs that right now. <laughs> then they can throw candy. And then put your hands up. Oh, yeah, get rid of your candy for a moment. Put it on the seat behind you. 
and get ready to bless this extraordinary couple. Before we bless you with a threefold benediction, I'll say to the two of you, may you always find the wholeness that you have in yourselves through the way in which you have found each other. May you always feel yourself rewarded for those things that your heart compels you to do to repair this world. And then that it blesses you to be able to find uh, such a dear and whole love. May you always find yourselves, truly yourselves together. And it's in that spirit that we now sing the Yivarechacha, the threefold benediction. Yivarechacha, Adonai Vishmarecha. May God bless you and protect you. Yai Adonai Panave Lecha Vechunecha. May the light of goodness that you emanate out into the world. May that shine upon you, and may that light of God also be gracious to you. May you always feel yourselves lifted by a divine presence. May you feel yourself connected deeply and fully, and may that bring you peace. And to that we say, Amen. 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 Mazel tovu, mazel tovu, simen tovu, mazel tovu, mazel tovu, candy throwing time, simen tovu, mazel tovu, mazel tovu, simen tovu, yehelanu, 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 ulachol Yisrael. Benjamin Conover, I believe you might be the only child under the age of 13 here. It is then your sacred and lucky responsibility to be on a little cleanup duty here. Ben, they're Swedish fish, <laughs> just so you know. It's a very sweet skate. I like when we have the beam moved back that barely anything can get on the top. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Oh, Your man. dentist is very happy. <laughs> so, so is his mom. <laughs> <sighs> With all of that joy, both that literal, the physical, the beautiful, the spiritual, we continue by bringing more joy into this, into this moment. As we acknowledge bride and groom, on Shabbat, we also welcome in Shabbat as a bride, that each and every Shabbat we are watching, we are engaging with a wedding. And so here we get to engage with a wedding. So if you're in person, I'm just gonna keep going here. There's nothing happening around me. We can lahado D while Candy's <laughs> being picked yeah. up. Uh, it's, it's like the opposite of a flower girl or a flower child. Uh, we're picking things up off, off the aisle for the wedding. Um, so we uh, are turning to page 123 in person, page 5 online for the words of lahado D. We'll, and on the last verse, on the ninth verse, we will rise as one community facing the entrance as if to welcome the Sabbath bride down our sweet aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
seated and blame it on high holy days I've way too many melodies and liturgy swimming in my head but this I think I'll get right the <laughs> Vishinantam nivanacha, Vidibarta bam, Vishitaha bevetaha, Uvlachtaha vadarach, Ufshochtaha ukumacha, Ukshartam leot ayadacha, Vayul totapot bene necha, Uchtavtam al mizuzot betacha, Uvisharacha. Leman tiskaru vatsitem et kol mitzvotai vihitem kiroshim lelohechem ani Adonai lohechem asher utseiti etchem eret mitzrayim lehiot lachem leelohim ani Adonai lohechem. One of my favorite poems, Yehuda Amichai imagines the Israelites standing at the edge of the split sea and asking themselves, what is my lifespan? They see this expanse stretching out before them and they don't know what's next. And that's kind of where we are in the year. We're at the beginning of the year. We celebrated Rosh Hashanah and 5783 is stretching out before us. and We don't know what's next. But what we try to do is we try to do what the Israelites did, which is step forward bravely and take it all in and experience the miraculousness of it. The miraculousness of getting to start over, getting something fresh, getting a new taste of freedom. So we are on page 158 for Micha Mocha. <laughs> Mi kamocha al nedar v'kodesh Dorot hilot osei felet Malchutecha rau v'necha Okeyam nifnei Moshe u'miriam Ve'li anu ve'amru Adonai we're on page 162 before Vishamru, our prayer about celebrating and protecting Shabbat.
everyone could turn to page 166 for just one moment and we're going to look in the Hebrew and in the English there's a little insert where it says Shabbat Shuva in the middle of the page in the English amidst all of the Hebrew and that is a special line that we pray just one time a year the whole year and that's tonight and in this special insert in these special extra lines that we read on the Shabbat between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur we see God as described as delighting in life. That, that part of us that experiences delight, that experiences joy, that says, how are we going to live our absolute best, most celebratory lives this year? Um, that is a holy part of ourselves, and that is a reflection of God. And so I hope that as we sit in this Shabbat Shuvah of return and repair and change, we also see ourselves delighting in life and how holy that is. So we rise in body and in spirit, and we are on page 164 for the Amidah. <laughs> Baruch Adonai, 
Magen Abraham bias not Sarah. Atagi borle la madonai. Mechaye ha colata rab the hoshia. Morid hatal. Mechal kel chaim bechesed. Mechaye ha col berachamim rabim. So mech no flim derofecholim. Umatir asurim. Umekaye memunato lishene afar Nihan mocha bal giburot Umido mela melech me meet Umekaye umats miak yeshua Nihan mocha ab harachamim Zoher yitzuram Zoher Yitzur Rab L'chaim Berachamim V'neman Atal HaChayot HaKol Baruch Atah Adonai Mechaye HaKol Atah Kadosh V'shim HaKadosh Ukdoshim B'chol Yom Yahlalu Chasala Baruch Atah Adonai HaMelech we take time now to sink into the quiet and peacefulness of Shabbat. We spend time contemplating what's on our mind and in our heart. And we stand or we sit in silence. And if you're standing when you're done, please be seated.
All right, I love that. So we're going to invite people to share names of those who are in need of healing, of body, of mind, of spirit. So we'll start over here. Well, actually, we'll start with our musicians. And if you have any, anyone you're thinking of who's in need of healing to be able to share their name. other If anybody has seen this app it's a newer app it was made in 2020 but it's really taken on a new life just recently it's called the be real app has anybody played with it anybody posted with it anybody completely it seems like everyone is completely unfamiliar with this so here's the app the app is that once a day you get notified on your phone, and you can include as many people in this circle that you want to, but what you have is two minutes to take a picture of yourself, whatever you're doing, and post it. You only have two minutes to do this, and it actually takes a picture from both your front and your back camera at the same time. Do you have that? So what you're doing, whatever you're doing in the day, you get a notification on your phone that it's time to take your picture. And so then you have two minutes to post a picture of yourself and what you're doing. And it's going to take a picture from the front and also from the back of your phone so that it can show both your face and also show the surroundings so people know where you are. That's, that's the app. And the whole idea is be real. You can include your friends and you can just show you don't have to put on more things around you. You don't have to get everything set just so. You don't have to have the lighting just right. But you can actually take a picture of yourself in real time and just show what you're doing. And once a day, you get to be real with yourself and with your friends. And do you know how long that app lasted in just that form? Not long because people couldn't help themselves. And so what would happen is that you could post a picture of yourself anytime up till the next day when there is that next buzzer that goes on your phone that says you have two minutes to take your picture. 
So you can post at any point, and what started to happen is that people would start to take their picture later in that day when they were doing something that they found to be more interesting or the lighting was better, but they actually could not even stand to be real for that long. And here we are on Shabbat Shuvah in a time where our tradition tells us it's time to be real. And yet that's very hard because what exactly does that mean anyway? So I thought this evening, instead of telling you how you should get real and be real, I thought instead I would bring this miraculous short story from Primo Levi, where he actually talks about the difficulty in what does it even mean to try to get real. And he does this in The Mirror Maker. Is anybody familiar with the story? It's a good one. It's a good one. You're welcome. So I left some bits out just for time. By the way, I'm taking a, a page from my mother-in-law's book. Um, my mother-in-law, Catherine Conover, a miraculous person in her own right, who every Saturday afternoon we join with her and the other people who are living in the... Um, what would you call it, a retirement village where, where they live in, in Arizona. And she has a group of people where she reads a short story to all of us. It's all on Zoom, so Damien and I get to join as well. And then we all discuss the short story afterward. So I am going to be, um, as best I can, I'm going to be Catherine Conover, reading this extraordinary story by Primo Levi. And then afterward, after the service, you can all be like the discussion group that talks about the story afterward. And what is exactly, what is it saying to us to be reading this during the time of the High Holy Days? Are you ready? Timoteo, his father, and all his ancestors back to the remotest times had always made mirrors. In a bread chest in their house were still kept copper mirrors green from oxidation and silver mirrors blackened by centuries of human emanations. There were others made of crystal and framed with ivory or precious wood. After his father died, Timoteo felt himself freed from the shackles of tradition. He continued to fashion mirrors according to the rules of the trade, which in any case he sold profitably throughout the region. But he also began once more to think about an old plan of his. See, even as a boy, unbeknownst to his father and his grandfather, he had broken the guild's rules. By day, during the hours in the workshop, being a disciplined apprentice, he made the usual boring flat mirrors, transparent, colorless, the kind that, as the saying goes, reflect the truthful, the virtual image of the world, and especially the image of human faces. But in the evening, when nobody watched him, he concocted a different kind of mirror. What does a mirror do? It reflects, like a human mind, but the ordinary run of mirrors obey a simple and an inexorable physical law, inexorable, I think, is the what I meant to say. So mirrors obey a simple and, and I still can't do it in that sentence, though, inexorable law, physical law. They reflect as would a rigid, obsessed mind that claims to gather in itself the reality of the world, as though there were only one. To Matteo's secret mirrors were more versatile. Some were of colored, striated, milky glass. They reflected a world that was redder or greener than the real one, or multicolored, or with delicately shaded contours so that objects or persons seemed to amalgamate like, like clouds. Some were multiple made of ingeniously angled thin plates of shards. These shattered the image, reduced it to a graceful but indecipherable mosaic. 
Yet, Timoteo had a more ambitious project in mind. In great secrecy, he tested various types of glass and silver plating. He subjected his mirrors to electric fields, irradiated them with lamps he had sent to him from distant countries, until it seemed to him that he was close to his goal, which was to develop metaphysical mirrors. A metamirror, that is. A metaphysical mirror does not obey the laws of optics, but reproduces your image as it is seen by the person who stands before you. The idea was old. Aesop had already had it, but who knows how many others before and after him, but Timoteo had been the first to realize it. Now, Timoteo's metamirrors were the size of a calling card, flexible and adhesive. In fact, they were meant to be applied to the forehead. Timoteo tested the first specimen by gluing it to the wall, and in it he saw nothing special. His usual image of an already balding 30-year-old with a witty, dreamy, and slightly neglected air. But of course, a wall does not see you, so it does not harbor images of you. So Timoteo gave a mirror to three people, an ex-lover, his mother, and a woman named Emma. Now, Agatha, his ex-lover, received him coldly. She listened to his explanation with ostentatious inattention. But when Timoteo suggested that she attach the metamir to her brow, she readily agreed. She had understood even too well Timoteo's thought. Indeed, the image of itself, of himself that he saw, as on a small video screen, was not very flattering. His hairline was not just receding, he was bald. His lips hung half open in a foolish smirk that revealed his rotten teeth. True, for quite some time now, he had been putting off a treatment advised by the dentist. His expression was not dreamy, but positively moronic. So he offered a second metamere to his mother who did not ask for explanation. And there he saw himself as a 16-year-old, blonde, pink, ethereal, and angelic. His hair was well combed, and the knot of his tie set just so. Like an in-memoriam photo, he thought to himself. Nothing in common with the school photograph he'd found in a drawer a few years before, which showed a lively boy, but interchangeable with the majority of his schoolmates. Now, the third metamere he gave to Emma. And on Emma's smooth brow, Timoteo saw a marvelous Timoteo. He was half length, his torso bare. He had the well-proportioned chest that he had always regretted not having, an Apollo-like face framed by a thick mane of hair in which you could glimpse a wreath of laurel and a gaze that was once serene and merry and hawk-like. And at that very moment, Timoteo realized that he loved Emma with intense, tender, and enduring love. Now, he distributed several metamirrors to his friends, and he noticed that no two images coincided. In short, a real Timoteo did not exist. He further noticed that the metamirror possessed a conspicuous virtue, it reinforced old and serious friendships. It rapidly dissolved friendships that were due to habit and conversation, or just simply convention. Nevertheless, every attempt at commercial exploitation failed. 
all the salesmen agreed in reporting. The customers satisfied with their images reflected on the brow of friends or relations were just too few. Timoteo patented his metamere and bled himself white for several years in an attempt to keep the patent alive. He tried in vain to sell it. Then he resigned himself and continued to make flat mirrors, which indeed were of excellent quality until the age of retirement. How do people see us? How do we want to be seen? Maybe instead of looking so much for who is the real one of us, instead we might want to aspire to be more than what we might find. Maybe instead of looking so hard to see how is it that someone else sees me or how can I try to find my real self, how can I find my best, maybe what we should do instead is to think about what do we want to give this world? What kind of legacy do we want to leave? And maybe on this Shabbat Shuvah, we start to aspire toward that. Shabbat Shalom. Well, on this Shabbat, I know we have a beautiful minion tomorrow morning that it will be led by Rabbi Singer and Cantor Ben David, uh, followed by a study. So I think that that will be wonderful. Do you want to share your topic? Yep, we're going to talk about the Asera Yemei Tshuva, the 10 days that we are in currently. And what's What's the story and the meaning behind them? Or the 10 days of repentance. <laughs> Beautiful. And then on Sunday, we invite you to, if you have loved ones who are buried in cemeteries around Chicago, that this is a time traditionally to visit the graves of loved ones. And we have beautiful prayers to be able to say there that can be found on the website. Uh, so we encourage you, you can do that at any time on Sunday if that's your practice and that's your wish. And then, uh, I don't know if you know, but Yom Kippur is coming up. It's very exciting. Uh, so uh, Kol Nidre is at 7.30 on Tuesday. On Wednesday morning is the 9 a.m. Uh, family service. Uh, and then our congregational service uh, begins at 11 a.m. And there's a JK through third grade Yom Kippur experience uh, during that service as well. Uh, and then after that service, we go into really a, a, a beautiful time of studying together and so, Rabbi Singer. So we have five poll options for Yom Kippur afternoon conversations. And we hope you'll sign up for one of them because um, they're a really exciting way to get to ex creatively explore the holiday differently. So we have music and meditation. Um, we have advocacy and activism, Judaism's responsibility to tr speak truth to power. So music and meditation is with uh, Rabbi Conover and Cantor Ben David, Advocacy and Activism is with Rabbi Gelman. I will be talking about Unpacking Israel with Deputy Consul, Ge Consul General Daniel Ashheim. Um, you can join uh, Andrea Jacobs and um, Susan Frankel, uh, who are going to be talking about raising kids through a national mental health crisis, um, and that is a discussion group for parents. And then finally, you can join, those are all both in person and online. Um, and then you can join, if you're just joining online, you can join um, Nathan Lamp in studying the book of Jonah.
So a lot of incredible options, and we hope you'll sign up for one of them. And at 3 o'clock that day, at 3 o'clock that day, we have our Yisker service. Um, so that is when we remember loved ones who have passed away that we want to be able to remember in a beautiful service. Um, and uh, that will be followed by an afternoon service. Um, some of our students are helping us to lead that. That should be very special, uh, followed by Naila and Havdala. Uh, I won't say the times of any of that because... Um, uh, and then do you want to share about Macomb Break the Fast? Yes. If you are between the age of 21 and 39, we are breaking the fast together. So you can sign up at the Macomb section of our Temple Sholem website for this. But we will be eating bagels and lox and drinking mimosas um, to celebrate all of the repair and teshuva we've just done. Hmm. And then I'll just say that as we're going into Yom Kippur, we also want to say that Sukkot is coming very soon after that. And so we'll have our special festival service on Monday, October 10th. Um, that will be at Emanuel Congregation that's on Sheridan Avenue. Uh, and then that evening, we will have a very special uh, Sukkot celebration here at 5 o'clock. Uh, we're looking forward to all of that and more. Can I uh, say about the, Suc the Sukkot celebration, we're going to have pie and hot apple cider and uh, crafts and decorating the sukkah, and it's going to be a fun outdoor festival. So we, uh, we hope that you'll all come. Absolutely. And if it rains, which it won't, of course, but if it does rain, we also have a beautiful sukkah indoors, and so we'll have the, the celebrations and festivities in here. That was a lot. Cancer, we understand that you, you know, we have to be very, very careful with your voice. So we took those all tonight. Very special times for my sons and my husband at home when I'm on vocal rest during this time. <laughs> <laughs> we turn now to the bottom of page 586. Please rise. <laughs> La teit gilula leotse breshid, shaloat manu kegoye haratso, veloos amanu kemishpochot ha'adama, shaloos am chelkenu kahem, vegor aleinu kechol hamonam, v'anachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech malche hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the Nemar, the Hayadonai, the Melech Al Koharet, the Yom Hahu, Yehie Adonai Echad, Ushmo, Ushmo Echad. Please be seated. So I'll just share with you that one of the books that I find most helpful um, in going through grief and loss is called Living When a Loved One Has Died by Earl Grohlman. And he goes through different stages that we often go through in grief. And he ends this book by talking about a new life. And as he talks about a new life, he adds this insight. He says that, Death has brought you face to face with your own mortality. You are looking at this irrational world with different eyes. You gain insights that have previously escaped you. You are more aware than before of what is significant and what is trivial. Your, your beloved lived, but you're still alive. And then he quotes Henry David Thoreau. The future is worth expecting. You have changed. You have grown. You understand for the first time what the psalmist meant when he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The important words are, walk through. You walk through. You do not remain where you were. Life is for the living. 
And so in this time where this week our Torah portion is called Vayelech, to walk, to walk through, we're all, many of us, have had ones whom we have loved and who have died. And we're all in this different place of walking through our grief. But we know that we don't walk alone. We walk with an entire community, with loved ones who are with us. And so for some of us um, during these High Holy Days, we feel that loss more acutely. And there are those of us who recently lost loved ones. And so we think of those and those people who have recently lost loved ones, and we offer them our deepest sympathies. We think of the family members of Philip Abramowitz, Victor Krupman, Carlos Guillermo Rizawi, Ralph L. Arnheim Jr. And we also remember those whose yard site we mark on this Shabbat. Blanche Abrahams, Doris Andre, Margaret April, Stanley Average, Eleanor Barnett, Rhoda Cohn, Gloria Copeland, Masia Crasco, Elaine DeWolf, Frida Dobrin, Edward A. Fox, Barbara Frankston, Norman First, Claudia Goffman, Jesse Heyman, Jack Hochman, sorry, Jack Hockman, Jack Joseph, Bradley Kettner, Dr. Jeffrey Korn, Philip Kornblum, Fanny Kinsberg Levac, Ronald Lewis, Hilda Lazell, Cynthia Lieberman, Linda Mark, Bella Rose Newman, Molly Oering, Shirley Rovner, Hortense Heilbrunn Rubin, Socorro Soko Ruiz, Ann Salzman, Paul Soboroff, Stanley M. Stone, and Morris Yellen. If there are others you are remembering on the Shabbat, I invite you to share their name. Kedishia Tome is found on page 598. Please rise. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash Shemeraba, the Alma Divra Hirute, the Amlich Malhute, the Chayahon of Yomehon, the Chaye the Fol Beit Yisrael, the Agala Wisman Hari, the Imru, Amen. Yehe Shemeraba, the Varach, the Alam, the Alme Almaya. Yet Barach, the Ishtabach, the Ipaar, the Tromam, the Itnase, the Itadar, the Itale, the Italal, Shemay, the Kudisha, Berehu, the Ela, Mim, Kol, the Irhata, the Shirata, Tushbahata, the Nahamata, the Amiran, the Alma, the Imru, Amen. Yehesh Lama, Rab, Amin Shamaya, the Chaim, Alin, the Holy Israel, the Imru, Amen. O se shalom bi murmad, huya se shalom, alinu bi o kol Yisrael, bimru, amen. O se shalom bi murmad, huya se shalom aleinu, ve al kol Yisrael, bimru, bimru, amen. Do you know I have something fun to get to announce? First, a mazel tov to John, Com John Carmel and Marla Gross. Woo! 
Um, and in celebration of themselves, they've sponsored the Oneg tonight. Yay! Yay! So tonight the Oneg will actually be in the Beit Midrash, so we'll just follow. Do you, uh, does everybody see Don? We can wave to Hi, Don. Hi, Don. So we'll, we'll pass you, Don, but you're welcome to join us too as we then continue to go um, just around that corner um, and find ourselves in the Beit Midrash there, the, what, we, what we used to call our chapel. Um, and so we'll enjoy some refreshments there. Um, and we're going to celebrate uh, Marla and John tonight and this whole year. It's challah and honey for the whole year for you two. <laughs> Very exciting. And so our closing song, are we returning again? We're going to return back to the beginning of the service and to ourselves. So it's page 662. Um, for our friends who are joining from home, it's on page 358. Some of it. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are born and reborn and return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Gemar Chatimatova. Gemar